Hi, welcome back to Zim Bike. We'd continue this video from where we stopped the last time on who invented the bicycle. If you missed the first part, kindly check the description for the link to the video. Penny Farthing Eugene Meyer is regarded as the inventor of Penny Farthing instead of who was previously named by ICHC, James Starley. Meyer, made in 1869, tension wheels that had wire spoke. He also made high bicycles that were classical in design till 1880. On the other hand, James Starley who lived in Coventry made tangential spokes and added a mounting step. His model of the bicycle was called Ariel which was famous. James is seen as the pioneer of the British bicycle industry. It was in this period that rubber tires, ball bearings, and steel frames with the hollow section became the standard for bikes. These additions made the bikes lighter and the ride smoother. This kind of bike was named Ordinary due to the fact that there was no other type then. Later it was named Penny Farthing around the UK. This bicycle was swift but very unsafe. The person who rode was seated high and was moving at fast speed. Assuming a cyclist was high there on top, moving speedily and then encountered a bump, he would be easily thrown off. This was a usual occurrence, people were thrown over the wheel in front. The commonest type of injury was broken wrists because people were prone to using their hands to break their fall. On some rare occasions, some even died because they landed head first. The danger associated with riding the bike made it the reserve of young men who wanted thrill. The elderly preferred tricycles which were more balanced and stable than penny farthing. Additionally, the fashion style of women in those days made them unable to use the bike. Queen Victoria of England, had a tricycle which was named Royal Salvo and was made by Starley. After the Franco-Prussian battle, French inventors had to modify the velocipede to a high wheel bike. But the invention was not popular in France because most people were still trying to recover from the effect of war. The Englishmen did so too, they changed the velocipede to a high wheel bike. The English investors then put them up for sale in markets. They became renowned. The cities in which the bicycles were most popular were Oxford, Manchester, Coventry and Birmingham. It was in these cities that the bicycles were mostly ridden so it was pretty logical that they would place the bikes there. Another reason why bicycles were mostly sent there was that there were so many sewing machine factories there. These industries had tools that were needed in making bikes. In 1878, Augustus Pope began making his Columbia Penny and Farthing. He was given almost every patent that was applicable, beginning with the patent of Lallement of 1866. Pope reduced the royalty which those who owned the patent before charged. He dragged those who competed with him to court because of the patents. The judicial system was in support of what he was doing. And his competitors had two options, pay royalty or be forced out of market. In France, they did not have any patent issues. Bicycles in France were made by English men and were most of the available bikes in the markets. In 1880, Pressy GW made a high wheel that he called American Star Bike. One peculiar thing about Pressy's bicycles was that the wheels were like that of the penny and farthing. Safety Bicycle The most vital change during the course of the history of the bicycle was the making of safety bicycles. Safety bikes restructured the mind of people, change how they viewed bicycle and riding. People started seeing it as a proper means of transportation. The nephew of James, Kemp John Starley was the first person who successfully produced a safety bike in 1885. Then it was not called a safety bike. It was called the Rover. The bike was a success. The pneumatic bike tire that was remade in 1888 by John Dunlop made it easier to use the safety bikes on the streets. The safety bike did have its shortcomings. It was not as comfortable as the high wheel bikes due to the small size of the wheel. The invention of pneumatic tires helped to eliminate some of these. Those who designed the frames of the bike resorted to making diamond patterned frames. This was because it was efficient and strong. October 10, 1889, saw Isaac Johnson, an inventor who had African American origin submit his patent. The patent was for folding bicycles. This was the very first bicycle that had the eye of diamond frames. Chain drive also made the bike go faster and provide better comfort. The drive transfers to the rear wheel without the steering. This made steering and pedaling free, smooth, injury-free, and relaxed. Hosea Libby was the first person to make an electric bicycle. He did so in the year 1897. 20th Century Roadsters 
The Roadster design was lady-friendly. It did not have a diamond frame rather it had a step-through frame. This was so ladies could quickly mount the bike and ride them. The bike also came with skirt guards. Just like the Roadster for men, this one was also made from steel. The way the frame was designed made the rider to be very upright when riding. The bicycle industry in Netherlands was also growing at that point and beyond. Still, Britain had the most developed and strongest market in bicycle making. The latest model of Roadster soon became obsolete in the UK and other countries in the global west. However, it was still famous in Netherlands. That is why currently, people call those kinds of bikes, Dutch bikes. Those years, the female roadster was called grandma's bike. In Dutch it was omafiets. The decline of the bicycle in America, the fame in Europe. There was a sharp decline in the interest showed towards bikes in the US from 1900 to 1910. In America, automobiles started gaining traction and were chosen over bicycles. As the century went to the 1920s, Americans began to see the bicycle as a toy for children. By 1940, the majority of the bicycles that were made in the US were produced for children. However, in Europe, the fame did not stop. Bicycles still enamored adults. The top producers of the bicycle in the UK were BSA and Raleigh. Innovations of technology. Technology began to help the evolution of bicycles. In France, derailleur was developed around 1900 to 1910. This was because of cyclotourists. It was also improved as time went on. The Second World War. When the Second World War started, multiple speed bikes were already famous. Yet the majority of the bikes that were used in battle were bikes that had a single speed. The bicycles were made use of by paratroopers for transportation. They were called bomber bikes. This was because the USA had a habit of dropping off the bikes from bomber planes for her troops. Germany had one battalion of bike infantry that were attached to every unit. The unit was called Volksgrenadier. The bicycle was very instrumental in Germany's capture of Poland. One bicycle company was made up of 196 bikes and just one motorcycle. As of September 1939, the Germans had 41 bike companies who were ready to go anywhere. Also, in the Sino-Japanese Battle II, the Japanese made use of almost 50,000 bike troops. The Malayan campaign had a lot of bikes that were used. The government began to seize bikes from citizens. They would seize the bikes and give them to their troops who were off fighting. In China, the fame of bicycles was not unknown. State-owned Flying Pigeon was the main bicycle-making company in China. At some point, a bike was one out of three things every Chinese citizen must have to show affluence. The other two were a wristwatch and a machine for sewing. The flying pigeon was now a means of social stratification even though it was not comfortable. In the 1960s to 1970s, flying pigeon, due to China's population, became the most famous mechanized vehicle in the world. In just 1986, the company sold 3 million bicycles. The bicycle had a 20-kilo single-speed black model. This model was popular with civil servants. The bikes were so in demand that people had to wait for years in line to purchase the bicycle. Even when your name was on the waiting list, one still needed to lobby a those in power. The bikes were expensive too. The cost of the bicycle was four times a civil servant's monthly pay. America, the competition between racer and cruiser. In the middle of the century, there existed two major bicycles that were in use by riders in America. Cruiser bicycles were heavyweight and were loved by people who rode for fun or for transportation. The bicycle had just one gear, coaster brakes that were pedal-driven, and balloon tires. They were loved due to their durability, comfort, and streamlined appearance. It also came with a list of accessories like the speedometers, the Springer forks, bells, and lights. On the other hand, bicycles that were light with narrow tires and hand brakes were bought from the UK. These bikes had three gears. It was imported from the UK and was called the English Racer. The Racer was an instant success in the market. As the 1950s began to round up, Schwinn, a great manufacturer began to make his own version of Racer. As the 1960s approached, the US started taking exercises seriously. This was the reason why the bloom of bikes occurred in the 1970s. The sales doubled from 1960 to 1970, again it doubled between 1971 to 1975. 
In peak times of bicycles in America, adult bicycles alone reached a total of 17 million buys. European Continent In England, the fame of the roadster began to decline as the 1970s turned in. This was due to the fact that more people wanted bikes for personal use. Manufacturers started making bikes that had derailleur and were cheap. The rave of the bicycles did not miss Sweden. In the 1980s, Atera, a Swedish company made bikes. The bicycle was entirely made of plastic. The failure of the bike was huge. In the UK, riders' attention began shifting to all-terrain bikes like the mountain bikes. The frame of the mountain bicycle made it sturdy. The bike could carry loads better than other types of bikes. This made it hard for the roadster to survive. By 1990 almost all roadsters were gone. 2.8 million sports bikes and mountain bicycles were sold then. The 21st century. Technology and bicycle merged really well at this point. It was used to build, design, and use them even. The frames were lighter because light materials were used in making them. Yet lightness was not given in place of strength. Now bicycles have gear systems that are purely electronic. Bike stability discoveries have also been helped via computer simulations. Texts such as hydroforming, CAD, and fluid dynamics have been applied to make the 21st century bike better than any of its predecessors. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also, drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details and visit our site www.zimbike.com for more awesome bicycle content like this.